Alright, I figured I'd do another rundown on the bike since some things have changed since the last time I did one. And then more things are going to change this year too. So, it's a 1970 frame. Uh, let's see. It's got the stock swing arm, stock fuel tank, and what else is stock? And the brake lever, I guess. Other than that, nothing is stock. It's all been aftermarket or whatever. So we got some the new shocks that David sells, which I really like these. I do wish it had the tank, the little reservoir off the back like the other ones I had did because that's how I mounted my license plate before and it worked out pretty well. But I do like these are black and they feel they feel a lot better quality wise riding. Um, janky license plate mount until I figure something else out. But for the shocks, my old ones, I don't know where they are, over here, were these with the little tank, which I liked because I mounted my license plate off the tank with some headlight brackets, and it worked pretty good. But these are like three, four years old now, and they show it. I was going to take the spring off of these and just get the, get the spring powder coated black, but I could not get them apart, and the bushings are all trash, so I figured time for some new ones. So I really do like those. Here's a better look at them, I guess. They're just kind of simple, plain, but the, the quality, the ride quality seems to be a lot better. Uh, same chain, but brand new, so it's the Renthal Gold chain. Same one I've always had, just put a brand new one on it. Uh, I got new foot peg bracket with foot pegs because I broke this foot peg on my bike a couple years ago, turning too sharp, and it caught the road, and it broke the weld, so it was all floppy. Um, let's see. Frames powder-coated. Just got that done this winter. Swing arms powder coated, wheels are powder coated, and the brake lever is powder coated black. And then I also had a second set of wheels powder coated, just the same white. I was gonna use those, and I brought two sets of wheels to the powder coater because I wasn't. I just wanted to get an extra set. I was gonna put some ice tires on it for the lake this winter, but never got around to getting out there. But I ended up liking these ones better. These were going to be the backup wheels because I liked how I had it before with the white wheels and the white bike. But once I got these back from Powder Coat, I just liked them too much, so I decided to use those. Uh, it's got the, the ZS 190, the Zongshin or whatever, 190. This one's branded Piranha. It's got the 212 Big Bore Kit. I bought the motor from Wholesale Cycle already with the Big Bore Kit. Uh, it's got a Kep Speed oil catch can slash breather. So the motor breather comes up, goes in the top, and then this hose, I just have routed over to the side because I couldn't really find a better place to route it. That's the breather vent. And then if this were to fill up with oil too much, it would only get this high halfway, and then it would drain back through the drain plug with that fitting back into the motor, which people say is not good, but... I'll be checking the can and emptying it because it's got a drain plug, but that's just worst case scenario. If it does get that high, it'll go back in. It'll never get higher than that. Uh, it's got an oil cooler I just got off Amazon. It was like 30 bucks. I had to figure out all the fittings. So I went with uh, Dash 3 push lock fittings off the motor here. We got some 90s. We got some 90s off the cooler. And they're just push lock. So those just push together and they stay. Uh, I built this terrible looking oil cooler mount out of like angle aluminum painted it black it's the best thing I come up with to get the oil cooler to not hit anything and still be able to turn the bars because when you turn them that would hit if I had it any higher and I tried to flip it so the fittings were on top like you're supposed to but then that would hit the fittings so I had no choice but to mount it like this which it's better than no oil cooler so I figure that's good enough it's got the FMF factory 4.1 exhaust which I believe they no longer make so I'm glad I ended up picking one up when I did two years ago because it's the best exhaust ever that I've had um, it's got some Amazon special racing coil just the whatever red orange the bright colored one it's got a I want to say a stock CDI it's either got the stock CDI still in it or it's got the Piranha racing CDI with the higher rev limiter and the better ignition timing for starting. I can't remember if I took it out or leave it in. I didn't really notice a different difference with it anyways, so it doesn't really matter over a stock one, but I, I want to say the stock one's in there. 
Um, the tires I went with this year are MMG is the brand, and they're just still the 12090 10s. But I just like the look of them. I have the new uh, billet front end with the bigger disc brake. So, got rid of the old front end I've had forever. Um, this is just same fender I had before, a little bit narrower, and this one is actually white plastic. The one I had before was like green with spray paint and it was all chipping. So I pulled this off one of my pit bikes since it was white, it doesn't have to be painted. So I don't have to worry about paint chipping off of it, so that's different but the same. Uh, same 7 inch LED headlight still on there. Same clutch lever off my Grom from a long time ago. Same bell, same handlebars, the same pro tapers, same cell phone mount, uh, same, what is this, a TRC billet throttle from T-Bolt, same throttle I've had for like three years. I did put new grips on it. Um, what else up here? I don't think anything up here. The carb is the 28 millimeter that comes with the 190. It runs pretty flawlessly right now, so we'll leave the 28 on there. I did get the new, well not the new, but the 3D printed taillight bracket that Jason was selling, which I really like. It's clean, mounts on there good. My seat does hit it and bend it down a little bit because my seat is 100% garbage at this point. But same wire harness, same gas tank, uh, new battery, same, everything inside is pretty much the same. But yeah, same yellow LED headlight. Well, it's not yellow. It's a film over it to make it yellow. Same brake light, but I mean, it's a new one, but same exact thing. If I can. So that's, that's the same. So that's how it sits now. And the things I've changed over the winter for this year. Things I'm going to change is. Only a few things, nothing crazy or nothing, but I'd like to get either a 28 or a 30 tooth rear sprocket because I put the 16 back on the front because I had a 17 and an 18, but even the 17, it puts the chain just too close to the case for my comfort. If it were to like stretch or come loose and it hit that case at a, you know, a high speed, it would probably crack the case and I didn't want to deal with that, so we have the 32 on the back. That's one thing I want to change is the rear sprocket. Um, the seat, for sure. I'm going to get a new one soon. These rivets are rusty. That one, is, it's there, but it's ripped through. The pan is, like, crushed. So I still don't have a latch because it broke, like, when I first bought the bike. So this doesn't latch to nothing. So all the weight doesn't sit on the latch like it, you know, kind of should. It sits right on these, and as you can see, that is crushed in and it destroyed the pan. This one's all dented in. So the seat sits kind of like at an angle like that. And I can feel it when I ride and it's all, I mean, I'm not gonna have a seat latch anyway, so it's always gonna be floppy like this, which doesn't really bother me. But the seat itself, I just need a new one. So that'll be getting ordered soon. I just gotta find a nice quality one. I do wanna figure something out for new mirrors. These are just here. I can't see nothing out of them behind me unless I kind of like tuck my knees in. I can see off to the side but not behind me. But I have them here just to keep it legal. But they're kind of useless. I hate the way they look when they were on the bar ends. When I had them up here they're just gross. So I want to find another good mirror that's actually functional and obviously keep it legal. But they're just on there just to be legal with it for right now. The swing arm is another thing I kind of want to change this year. I like it, it's fine, brand new powder coat, but I feel like the bushing inside is a little bit worn out, because this is obviously 50 years old, and this went through the powder coating oven with the bushing in it, and with the new power of this motor, when you get on it or let off the gas, I feel like the swing arm's kind of doing the thing where it's the loose bushing, so it's kind of floppy, which I'm not a big fan of, so I'm kind of thinking maybe a new swing arm, unless I can get this one to not be sloppy. I'm not going to buy a cheap one, I'm going to buy, you know, like, at least two inch extension one. I'm going to buy, like, an aluminum uh, two inches longer swing arm if I do 
change it out. I'm going to try to get a nice one, a nice sturdy one, because this motor puts, it's like a lot of power. It's going to put a lot of stress on that swing arm. So I'd like to do that. I'm going to still kind of look into that and see what I'm going to do. But other than that, it's pretty much going to stay the way it sits. Other than the main change that you'll see will be the seat for sure, and then possibly swing arm. Other than that, that's what's that's what she is. That's what it's changed on it, and that's what's probably the few things that possibly will change this year. And then if it survives, the engine survives all this year of me piss pounding it. I'm more than likely more than likely going to buy the Daytona four valve head and put that on this winter. Well, next winter, and do the four valve deal even a little bit more power that way not like it needs any more power than this 212 makes right now it's like stupid fast but I always want more power so why not but we'll see how this year goes what breaks what lasts you know what issues I have with the engine and the transmission and the electric start chain all those common problems so we're gonna have to just wait it out and see how she holds up but but yeah and then also I did new New black hardware with the wheels because I wanted black hardware to match the hubs. Um, I built this little bracket that bolts on the axle, and then this little this little finger comes over, locks the speedo gear in so it doesn't sit there and spin when you're riding. But other than that, that's about it. And then obviously new new stickers I put on backwards. Um, the new main stickers up here. But yeah, that's. The 2020 version of this thing compared to last year. I think it was last year I did the other video. Maybe it was the year before, I don't really remember, but here's how she sits now. So that's the rundown.